Mm. What's up, everybody? It is your girl, Miss Motivation on Mogul Mindset, Avis Cherie, the Inspire. Y'all, I tell you, um, since last doing a video, I was at the emergency room. Um, that was probably a week and a half ago. Um, since September 12th, I was sick. Um, out of nowhere, um, my health declined, my mobility, um, I was disoriented, um, face numbing, body numbing, face pains, uh, body pains and aches and all over the place and um, just really alarmed. So uh, fast forward, I just had a primary doctor appointment this Tuesday. Um, so let me say that I do not have all the results, but um, my MRI and MRA just came back good. There's no tumors, aneurysms, and my arteries are okay. Um, I do suffer from chronic migraines, um, which is the swelling of the blood vessels and so forth. Um, they are swollen as they would be because I am in a little bit of pain. But today I am much stronger than I was yesterday. Um, this is the fourth day that I was able to take a walk. Um, it wasn't consecutive in all this time that I've been down. Um, in 18 days, I went out for a walk four times. So I want to bring awareness to um, some things my primary care physician discussed with me and the potentials of what things could have been. Um, like I said, it could have been an aneurysm, tumor, um, clogged arteries, blood clots. Um, one thing in particular that on the day I did my last vlog, my best friend in New York and my brother, he texted me and was like, hey, um, you might be a long hauler. And I'm like, what's a long hauler? He said, long COVID. And I was like, well, what's that? And I'm in the ER, you know, reception is wagging. I'm in all this pain. I couldn't read. I couldn't talk. Um, I'm not going to hopefully be here long because it starts to hurt. Feels like it's a rubber band pulling my ears back. That's the tension headache I have. But on a scale of one to 10, I'd rather take a six, seven tension headache versus a 10,000 migraine that I had that shuts down parts of my body and give me stroke symptoms. So just um, wanted to come because my primary care physician echoed what my best friend um, stated about long COVID. Never heard of it. I Googled it the day he said it, dismissed it. Um, I do not know if I have it. Um, I will say that the day before I went to the ER, I took a COVID test. It was negative. Um, my body was so fatigued and heavy. And my mother had just been here. We had been traveling for my birthday. Um, we had traveled a couple of times in September. And I just wanted to be sure, but I didn't want to scare anyone in my household. So I took a COVID test. It was negative. Um, and so the next day I went to the ER. But my primary care physician let me know Tuesday of this week that it would, if I am a long COVID hauler, that it would come back negative because if you're a long COVID person, it does not um, show up positive on your test results. Um, it's not like you're reinfected. It's that they have to test your body for antibodies of the virus. And because I had COVID really bad last October 14th, almost a year to date, um, they've been seeing a high number of people coming in that's a year out from recovering from COVID and surviving COVID, but coming in with symptoms as dramatic as COVID. And um, so she gave me a playlist of what those symptoms look like. Um, I didn't mention it to her because I had forgot um, that he had mentioned it to me. So I wasn't going in seeking and fishing for things to curate to tell me what was going on with my body. I'm better dealing with the truth um, assessing where we're at and assessing my options, um, which is going to require me to travel to a multiple of hospitals um, in a tri-state area to seek further extensive treatment for my blood vessels swelling the way they do and the dangers of that, right? So we'll get to that. Anywho, she gave me the symptoms list. So I'm just encouraging you guys to um, not over indulge in reading too much about something and putting burdens of, of disproof on you until you know for sure. But in my case, um, she was listening to the dates and the amount of times and breaking down 
how this thing resubmerges in your body and starts to attack your liver, your kidneys, give you stroke, heart attacks. It's like, so the antibody having the residue of COVID swimming through our bodies, some people are long COVID haulers that exemplify dramatic um, symptoms. And some people are dying as a result of the aftermath, not even just having a fresh thing of COVID because you're not contagious. It's actually what is still doing and damaging your organs. So if my test results, they have, they have not come back. It may take up to a week because of the amount of um, and the types of tests that I had. I just called before I did this vlog, but um, they told me to try back next week, depending on where they had to send my stuff out to. So um, when she said it, it made so much sense. I wanted to know if I can infect others because I have a new grandbaby. I wanted to go see, I've been around my, all my, uh, my family members. My mom was here. She's what they consider elderly, elderly but she's fly. Um, and I also wanted to know the extensiveness of the damage that it can do to me at this present moment. However, they don't have any data. So UPenn has a special study um, and special zhuzh that they're doing for long haulers or long COVID cases. And the only way they're finding out about long COVID cases is as the long case COVID cases come into the ER. The long COVID cases coming to the ER or coming to their primary and exemplifying symptoms out of nowhere that is debilitating, that is disorienting, that is immobilizing people, that is putting us flat on our backs. So I wanted to come and spread that awareness today that I am unsure at this moment. Um, it would make sense. Um, there's no timeline that it lasts. I have to govern myself as if I cannot stress, I cannot raise my voice. I have to stop, I have to stop talking, I have to stop doing this. I have to reprioritize, I have to say no. Um, and I'm a person that really, I can say no, but I really look forward to saying yes, forging through things. Um, I am normally one who can be sick and like this on the, on the tablet or like this on my laptop. I am one that can multitask projects and challenges and goals and family and not even multitask. I have a way of doing things. Um, for the last uh, 18 days, I have not been sleeping. I have just been resting. My body has been so heavy that all I could do is lie flat. Um, I forced myself to come out of a mental coma to cook, to clean. I love my healing agents, which are my canine babies. Um, the prayers, I could only text. I would not take calls because it hurts too bad to talk. Um, so like my last vlog, being considerate. Um, when you see people have 10 minutes to do a video or a couple minutes to talk, or you see them enjoy their self, understand it. It is a push for some people and it's a push for most people to persevere through. That's what perseverance is. I'm going to take this time to smile, to um, not look at the obvious things that have been affected as a result of this illness or this little passing phase of what this is. And I'm just going to enjoy the sunlight enjoy hearing the soothness in my voice and enjoy ministering and serving others and informing others of just taking care of your well-being and your psyche and making sure that most things are in alignment as best that you can be. Um, I didn't meditate because I couldn't even sit up and that was something different for me because I love to meditate but I can pray and meditate wherever I'm at so sometimes when I needed to come out of myself and come out of that funk and levitate to another place in my spirit, in my mind, and align that plane in my body, I would lay flat and it was in my sleep and I would just allow myself to be removed from the elements of the flesh of this body, be removed out into a place of peace. And it's important that I do that because the place where I was at wrapped up in this flesh in these thoughts was trying to figure things out um, and I'll leave on this note. I had an episode yesterday 
where I was laying down. And before I went to the doctor on Tuesday, I wasn't laying down thinking about, I was laying down knowing what I had to forfeit. I canceled engagement, postponed trips, um, lost a lot of money. Um, I knew what I was facing and I knew that God said rest because there is nothing you could do about any of that. And none of it will give back to you what I'm going to give to you, what I have to give to you and what I have for you, right? The minute I went to the doctor who I love, she's amazing. I started the same thing that I knew I had to forfeit for 18 days. Now was matched with anxiety of having results that could have, I had a range of things that this could be. So the range of things waiting on these results for one day created and stirred up so much anxiety that now these things touched and exploded in an instant. And what I want to say to you, know when to get up and unstuck. Know that you don't have to sit there, keep letting it touch, letting it touch, letting it touch. Because if you keep overdoing it, overthinking it, overindulging it, over assessing it, over emphasizing it, over obsessing in it, it's going to be dead. It, 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 the revelation is it's dead. You, you're going to kill parts of you. You're going to kill parts of your faith. You're going to kill parts of your hope. You're going to kill parts of your gratefulness and your thankfulness of what, of what you've already come through. If you just keep letting things ignite and touch those dead areas, what you have to do is stop and assess and say, let me take out the dead things and recharge with something new. And that's what I did. I got up and said, okay, you've been new what you had to forfeit at the onset of this thing. As soon as it started happening, you gave up some things quickly and you didn't apologize. You didn't tell people when the next date's going to be. You didn't tell people when you was dropping your book. You didn't tell, you didn't get on here and explain that the book is ready, but you can't because you can't show up. You didn't tell nobody your coaching business ready, but you can't show up. You didn't, don't start obsessing over that now because you're waiting on results. It's only been 48 hours, 24 hours at that point. I was, that thing started to ignite. It started to tell me what was dead in my life. What was, what I was losing in my life. How I was lacking and it was lying. And the minute that charge took place, I knew it was a negative and a negative. It wasn't a negative and a positive. I jumped up and I changed the atmosphere in that moment for myself. If not for anybody else, I changed the atmosphere in that moment for myself because that is a place that is not going to charge me, that is not going to pour into me, that is not going to recharge me, that is not going to reinvigorate me, that is not going to sustain me, nor will it keep me. So I just wanted to get on here and encourage you today that at that moment, and it's a negative and a negative change the atmosphere into a positive for your mental health, your physical health, and more importantly, your spiritual health. Attune that and you'll see that the best is yet to come. And you can tell Satan to get thee behind me because that's all it is. All right. This is your girl, Miss Motivational Mogul Mindset, Ava Cherie. Be inspired. Until next time, God's love and God's peace, God's health and God's speed to you.